This is the Football Podcast with your hosts, Tyler, Andy, and Boyer. We're going to figure this shit out. Welcome back to Manistee Football Podcast presented by your performance enhancing dads. What's happening, fellas? Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Say, 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 you're ha- say you're happening, and I'll say, yeah, I'm awake. It's fine. Here we go. <laughs> that was your nap, Ty. The nap was fine. We're running a little late tonight. It's fine. <laughs> Here I am. I made it. You made it. It's all matters. Um, And let's, let's just get into it. Pow! Andy, what are oh. you drinking? <laughs> you're the only one, straight you're, to me. You're the only yeah. one drinking tonight, so let's just let's just go to you. Fat tire. Fat tire. What? Oh, hey, me too. I didn't want to go to the. Oh, I didn't know you were I drinking. Didn't boy, I didn't know boy was drinking. Hey, well, cheers, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. That's cute. I was uh I was waking up from a nap, so I didn't have a t- chance to go get beers. It just wasn't happening. So here we are. We're lucky Lack he's of dedication. Now, really. <laughs> that, that's what we call the, the host of the year right here. Napping through the podcast. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Andy, how did we do last week on picks, man? Well, you know, if our loyal viewers recall, we all agreed, I think for the first time in podcast history, all three of us agreed for all six matchups. And wouldn't you know it, we went six for six. So great week for all three of us unfortunately ty didn't gain any ground but six and oh all's around so uh we have decided collectively that we're going to coordinate our picks going forward and make sure we keep picking ourselves until this stops working so (laughs) don't be surprised if we keep picking down the line just to see if this power is real or or imagined time time to run on the table boys yep (laughs) that's that's right (laughs) uh um andy how was how was your uh lowest uh lowest victory oh shit i forgot to pull that up and manasi history here let me uh let me pull that up while you guys talk about how bad it was the lowest all right all right so i i know it definitely wasn't the lowest but it's it's it was it was really low like it was damn bad really low damn bad 66 points Honestly, I'm not even mad because it was they were both in my division. So it's like, well, and they both had the same record. So it was like, well, it doesn't matter. But I'm still a little upset. <laughs> yeah, well, and here's here's the problem. The only thing that Andy really could have done is play Juju Smith Schuster, which put up 17 on his bench. But even then, he's at like adds about 14 or something. It adds oh, about no. 14 points okay. to his lineup. What did I score this week? 66. 66, 66 point what? Uh two oh two. Sixty-six oh two. Yes. All right. I, that's a uh, eighth, eighth highest low score to win. Um, eighth, eighth lowest high. Yeah, <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Seven Andy other did people did worse. All right. What's that's the what lowest? I'm saying. Uh, the lowest. We have two wins in the fifties. I would have guessed fifty-three ish is the, the probably the lowest. Twenty seventeen week one, week one. No buys. Oh. No nothing. 2017 week one, Friar beat Robbie 58.24 to 57.12. Uh, and then last year, last year, yeah, last year, 2021 week 11, Ty beat Boyer 59.5 to 57.02. Mm, yeah, I remember that. That was a, that was a rough start. <laughs> uh, the, I still got to get you your toilet bowl for losing. Yeah. Since I beat you once ever in our last <laughs> game, that might have been twice, but that's okay. We'll we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is my first win ever, scoring fewer than seventy points. Um, seeing if any uh, Chris has two wins there. Friars got two wins. Colin's got two wins in the sixty uh, under seventy points. Jeremy's got two wins. Charlie's got two wins. Ty's got one. I don't see Boyer on this list. Um, Walker's got two. Um, I think that's because Paul Boyer, on this list. Boyer only gets like mid fifties or eighties. He doesn't get seven, you know, sixty range. So fair enough. So yeah, see, I'm not setting any records. Friar and 
Tyler winning with 50 something is way more embarrassing than me winning with 66. Hold on. Is it more embarrassing or is it more impressive? Because that's hella good defense. <laughs> Well, I, I will point out that I don't think any of these people who won these games made playoffs, so that's not good. <laughs> uh, well, you can, right. you can buck the trend. I believe in you. I, you know, I'll do what I can. All right. Well, with with that, last week we went pretty straight down, right? Andy said it. So I got to win. Robbie won. Boyer won. Andy won. Walker won. Chris won. All of you people that didn't win, there were so many scores that were low this week. It was, it was crazy. Week. There were four four of us went over a hundred. Nobody was in the nineties. One of us was in the eighties. Everybody else was seventy or under. It was a weird week for fantasy with these scores. So, so uh, league scoring, like as the NFL from two years ago, I think I saw this on the Colin Coward, like a clip from his show. I think league scoring is down almost like 10 points a game or something from two years ago. Yeah, Jeremy down. texted me this week and said that there's been, I think, 100 fewer touchdowns or something like that. From last year and 110 yeah. from the year before that. That's that's, not... that's insane. Yeah. So, I good defense? Bad offense? Uh, what I saw was that uh, one of the big differences is uh, a lot less big plays, which, like, I feel like... I think we could see that in the fantasy scores and like how we're rooting for teams. Yeah, I think um, defenses are kind of but, figuring out that you don't want to yeah. get beat <laughs> deep because that's how everybody was winning last year. Yeah, I think that we're seeing a lot more of that like Lovey Smith to cover shell, uh, just make them trickle and dime and down the break. field and then hope you can get a stop or a turnover or something like that. Make let, let them make the mistake rather than get the big play and get the automatic six. So, um, I don't think it's a trend that's going to go away by any means. Our defense is just figuring that out. I feel like that should have been figured out a long time ago. Like, don't give up the 60-yard play by <laughs> touchdown. Give up three or four 10 or 12-yard well, plays and we'll, we'll be better. Well, well, think about it. Like, before Mahomes and things, right, you had, like, Brady and Manning and Breeze, all these pocket passers. So you're doing all sorts of crazy blitzes and stunts and trying to get pressure in fancy ways generally meant that you were putting a little less guys in coverage just trying to get to the quarterback real quick and now i think that they're just trying to contain the quarterback and drop people back and prevent the big the big play the outside contain the crazy rushes they're not doing an awesome job of it but it's clearly doing something yeah fair enough all right well let's get into some uh fantasy football here that actually matters uh andy <laughs> what's up you Let's run through some true and false real quick before we go to benches and then we'll go to matchups for the week. All right. I've got a few, I've got four here pulled. Sure. Um, we can cut some if, if uh, we talk a lot, but that's uh, not true. We don't, we don't cut anything. This is one take. That's true. Sometimes <laughs> we go two hours and people complain, but they all watch it. You guys watch it. You like it. At, le at least Walker, Walker, yeah, true and yeah. false for you, bud. <laughs> all right. Uh, true or false. Kyler Murray is, a top five quarterback in rushing yards. False. I mean, I have to imagine that that's true. All right. True for Boyer, was... false for Ty. Ty, give me a shot at five guys ahead of him. Lamar Jackson. Sure. Uh, Jalen Hurts. Sure. Possibly Mahomes. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, Dan Jones has been running a little bit, but I don't know how. I just don't feel like Kyler Murray's got a whole lot of rushing yards. Is my problem. But I, I don't, I don't know. I which ones are beating him? Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, let, let's get to the answer here. Uh, it is false. Uh, so Lamar's number one. Hertz is number two. Like you said, uh, Boyer. Since you know more football names than Tyler tonight. Uh, fresh off a nap uh who's number three on this list josh allen justin fields justin fields justin no. fields has 282 rushing yards wow yeah it's, uh number hold on hold on it's not that i didn't know football names it's that i was struggling to figure out what the top five were because last week you told me i should stop talking when i started saying brady on 
being in the top so many. So you, you didn't want to say a name <laughs> that was way down the list, like Pat Mahomes? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pat Mahomes only has 113 rushing yards so far. So how far down the list is he? He's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Number ten slash nine. Uh, so number four on this Still list is Taysom Hill. So I'm going to toss him out and not actually rank him. So Mahomes is nine, but he's a quarterback. Uh, is he? I think he's a running back. He just doesn't have running back eligibility for some he's reason. He's a tight ends. Definitely not that. <laughs> um, number four, ignoring Taysom Hill, is Josh Allen. Number five. Dan Jones, good call, Ty. Um, Dan Jones has 47 rush attempts, which is tied with uh, Josh Allen among quarterbacks. Well, I mean, he got half of him in that Bears game on those naked boots where we weren't covered. That's true. We did not want to play the bootleg <laughs> whatsoever. Um, and then right behind Dan Jones at number six is Kyler Murray with 233. Um, the last guy on this list before a drop is Marcus Mariota. He's got 206. And then he it drops the Niners. Yeah, it drops to Gino at 125. So there's a 70, uh, 80 yard drop there. So, yeah, I thought that was uh, kind of surprising. I know Dan Jones is a mobile quarterback that gets some rushing yards. I was surprised to see him ahead of Kyler. And I was also very surprised to see Justin Fields at 282. I know he's been yeah. running for his life, but I don't feel like he always makes it down the field. Fields, Fields has a. Uh has that weird thing happening where he has to run for his life, like you said, but Dan Jones, like he loves to take off, get like 60 yards and trip over nothing. So he, <laughs> he, he does, he does There's run up. In chunks is what you're saying. He does it in chunks. <laughs> he doesn't always score the touchdowns on the long runs, but he gets, he gets a nice, nice run and he falls down. All right, let's move to the next one. That's this a good one, idea. This one's fun. It'll be short. The Washington commandos, have more two point attempts than extra point attempts. True or false? I'm going to go with true. So purely because I don't think they've got a lot of touchdowns, and I think that they have gone for two a few times. True. Washington leads the league with six two point attempts. Cardinals have five. Saints have four. Nobody else has more than three. Um, but They've scored 13 touchdowns, so they have kicked an extra point seven times. Um, but that, 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 it's not nobody's nobody should be starting the Washington kicker. Is what I'm saying right there. Like, you're not getting the extra bonus point there after touchdowns. Because apparently, it's a coin flip as to whether or not they're going to kick it or not. Maybe they should be starting them now that Taylor Heineke is there. Maybe. I don't. Does that change? Anything? Yeah, because John it, Dobbs, was it Carson Wentz back. known for getting two point conversions? <laughs> For what it's worth, they've only converted two of those six attempts on two pointers. Well, they should have just been kicking field goals or PATs then. Right. All no, right. I was saying Taylor Heineke's you keep them in games so they don't have to go for two every time to play catch up. Uh, okay, next one on the list. Uh the Bills have rushed for three touchdowns as a team. True or false? They played six games. They got a quarterback who rushes. They've got 18 running backs. Sometimes they pull out sneaky plays, get a wide receiver, a touchdown. False. I think they have like one more than that. And I'm pretty sure three rushing touchdowns is like what Josh Allen has. I think single to Harry had one last week. I Did don't believe that. that. Two weeks ago. He had one recently. Singletary has not had a rushing touchdown. He has had a receiving touchdown. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Which is why I'm debating on how many rushing touchdowns this team has had. Zach Moss had. Did he have one early? Did they? You said they had what? Three. Three. It's been six games. Probably true. It's probably like right at three, but it might even be two. It's it's not been good on the ground though. They've been passing everything. All right. Ty says true. Boyer says false. It is. True. The Bills are second in the league in all touchdowns. They have 21. They've got a pick six. They've got three rushing touchdowns and 17 passing touchdowns. My apologies. Josh Allen has two rushing touchdowns. I just looked it up. Moss have the third one then probably. 
Probably. <laughs> like All right. Uh, if, the, I, if I had to guess. The Chiefs have the exact same numbers as the Bills, but they do have one more rushing touchdown. So they have one more total touchdown. Um, third on the list of total touchdowns are the Eagles, who have 13 rushing touchdowns and only six passing. Good thing most of those 13 are Jalen Hurts, so his value stays high. Uh, if anybody's concerned, it was James Cook with the other rushing touchdown. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. I had written him off. I forgot about that guy. Yeah, so there you go. All right, last one. Um, the Seahawks have the lowest red zone touchdown percentage. So the percentage of the time that they get into the red zone – that they get a touchdown. Seahawks worse than the league. True or false? Mm, I'm going to say false. I feel like the Bears probably have that. Bears don't get to the red zone. See? Yeah, but that's, I I mean, that's the point. If they have zero touchdowns and four uh, red zone ever attempts, then it's still zero. <laughs> I, I'm going to say false just because they've been scoring a lot, but why you pick the Seahawks is is they're probably bottom three, but I don't think they're bottom. Okay. It is false. They are the second worst. Um, the Bears got called out. The Bears have 15 red zone possessions and seven touchdowns. 46.7% touchdown percentage. Um, now, the uh, Seahawks have 18 possessions, six touchdowns, 33%. Uh, but last in the league. Carolina. And by a lot. Uh, Carolina's real shit in most of these metrics, but they have converted five touchdowns and 13 uh, attempts. It's because they're almost zone. So they're 38 and a half. They're third worst. McCaffrey uh, scores, I know. I get it. Yeah, they're forced to do it. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are missing uh, the goal line fumblers, the Denver Broncos. Oh, uh, 15 red zone possessions, three touchdowns. That's good. 20%. They've scored, They've scored three. That's real bad, guys. I don't know if you know, but that's not good. And they're uh, supposed to have like a Hall of Fame quarterback or something on their team. Yeah, you would think. Uh, they, got, fun. they got some other players too. Right. Uh, the Texans only have 10 red zone trips. Um, but they only played five games. So if you ignore them, uh, the Titans and the Panthers have only been to the red zone 13 times, but the Titans have scored 12 of the 13 times they've been there. So that's good. Well, that's what happens oh. when you have a bus to hand the ball off to. <laughs> good old Derrick Henry. <laughs> right, and then I've got, I don't have a true false for this one, but I just want to call something out as uh, things that, that should regress to the mean here. Um, currently the Rams lead the league in turnover percentage 21 percent of their drives end in a turnover that's ridiculous that's too many to be normal um well, on let's the, keep let's normalize that for them because my niners aren't looking great either man on the opposite end of the spectrum uh leading the league in turnover percentage the eagles 3.1 percent so oh. That's this is why they win games. Tick up a little bit too. So something to be aware of if you think that what's been happening is just always going to keep happening. Both of those numbers feel unsustainable. Fair enough. All right. That's my true false for this week. I hope you guys liked it. I'll All give right. you some harder ones. Yeah. All right. So let's uh let's shoot over to benches. We're gonna I know we've gotten into bye weeks here. Things have been changing a little bit. People have been picking guys up to fill bench spots or whatever. Um, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to talk about uh, some of our favorite benches, some of our least favorite benches, and then all you mediocre benches out there, we're just going to not talk about you. So here we go. Um, I know Boyer and myself, we're looking more at the top end of the benches because the bottom couple are going to be flipped around due to – by weeks and injuries and other stuff. Um, so, Boyer, why don't you start us with your favorite bench? Who's, uh, whose bench do you like the best? Yeah, I mean, I think this one's pretty obvious, and it's going to be Ty. 
Um, Singletary and Ayuk are nice to have. He capped, uh, or he, he's got his handcuffed with Deontay Foreman. Uh, Eno is solid for right now. And Michael Thomas is out, but I mean, he was effective when he played and I, I expect him to come back sometime this year. Um, Ty doesn't really need a strong bench, but he has one anyway. Um, so that's kind of frustrating, but I think that Ty is easily top two bench when you're looking at all the teams right now. Yeah, for sure. I think any of those players that you rattled off for are, would be starters on most of the rosters in this league. I started, you know, last weekend. So, right. and that's probably the worst guy that you just named on Ty's bench. So, yeah, yeah. Ty's, Ty's bench is probably the best in the league. I don't have any disagreements there. I'm having a real hard time with, uh, do I drop Eno slash trade Eno or drop Deontay Foreman for a week and then hope to pick him back up because... I mean, with I, having all I still the need a kicker. you have, you could drop Foreman, and there's no guarantee Foreman's the handcuff. It could be Hubbard. It's it's leaning Deontay, but you're right. Yeah, I think that you, you drop the guy that you could easily pick Deontay back up, and really the smart play would be, I believe if you drop Deontay Foreman a little bit before game time, then he'll go into waivers and give you that chance to pick him back up. So you'll, right. you'll get a last pick on kicker, but you would then potentially get a chance to get Deontay back if it really mattered. And honestly, you don't really need a kicker that bad on your team. You pretty much smoke everybody without a kicker. So <laughs> I, I, this is a week, I believe you had me pegged to lose to Colin. So let's. <laughs> oh, do I? <laughs> do, are, are you going to have a rough week this week against Colin? You know, I, maybe I misspoke. That was early in the year. Uh, younger Tyler was not, was not a very smart person. Didn't, didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> So, all right, Andy, uh, Andy, what do you got here? You want me to go next? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so after Ty, I've got Boyer. Um, I think uh, having the fourth running back in Travis Etienne behind Aaron Jones, Brees Hall, Damian Pierce is great. And he's also got four receivers, uh, Tyreek Hill, Mike Williams in the starting lineup every week. But having uh, Brandon Cooks, Tyler Boyd are great options for bi-week fill-ins and, you know, playing matchups if if you don't like what Mike Williams is staring at. And then Boyer also picked up Latavius Murray, who Melvin Gordon got benched at the end of that last game. The Broncos offense has been terrible, but Latavius Murray came in and has been seeing work. So that's a, another solid name. And then Boyer's tight end situation is questionable between Tanyan and Knox, but having the, both of them there being able to play matchups and pick the one you want in any given week, you're going to guess wrong, but really neither of these guys is super great. So having the option to at least make a choice between which one you like better is not nothing. No. So Boyer's my solid number two there. All right. So fiber. Who do I have at number two? Well, I didn't even have myself on the list, you know, because all my guys, all my bench is injured. So I'm hoping they come back all right. At least your starters are healthy for now. Hey, well, knock, easy. Come knock on. on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> I am not going to knock on wood. Sorry, Ty. We don't cheer for injuries, but we could really use one. <laughs> um. So I, I've got Walker. Um. With, with Hopkins coming back and Lockett playing well, he's got Brown and Jefferson. You can intermix four wide receivers. Clearly, Jefferson and Brown are your go-to. But, like, this week, both of them are out, and he still gets to play Hopkins and Lockett. Assuming those two guys are good still, Lockett's shown out so far. Hopkins comes back. Now with Marquise Brown out, I think those are two great wide receivers to have on the bench. And then he's still got Daryl Henderson as well. So, I – He's got Which Taysom Hill. a they, lot better. <laughs> right. And and then he's got Taysom Hill slash Kyle Pitts. So, I mean, he's got a tight end situation that he can at least play two tight ends, whichever tight end that week. He, Kyle Pitts finally scored a touchdown. So, Andy will say you always start Kyle Pitts. because that's I did what he say said to last start week. Kyle Pitts last week. Three catches well, he for also 19 said, yards, not ideal. He also, but... he, he also said Taysom Hill has the – what third most fourth most rushing yards out of any quarterback so <laughs> play the Russian quarterback in your tight end spot I don't know <laughs> yeah that's an option so but I I just think that Walker's team is deep with the wide receivers and then having the extra running back is always good as well the Melvin Gordon situation may not be great right now but you know what 
Hackett had a talk with Melvin Gordon and Melvin Gordon's going to be the starter this week and Hackett's trying to save his job. I don't know what the fuck that guy's doing, but Melvin Gordon got he a talk to. <laughs> so I don't know, but I, I like Walker's bench. I like his depth and I think uh, it helps be able to keep sustaining him throughout some of these bye weeks. Yeah. So. I also had Walker pegged as one of the better de- better benches. So I had uh, Paul and myself up there as on the good side of things, but obviously not in the same tier as the ones we've already mentioned. I did I did have Robbie as one of my other ones a little bit higher up, just because he's got I I don't know about Hawkinson, but to be honest, he's got the four running backs. Yeah. He's, Fourth running back makes a huge difference. Right. He's got, to be honest, who knows about Rondale Moore at this point? I know we've talked bad about him, but with Marquise Brown out, that could be fine. Um, he's got Najee's handcuff. Allen Robinson scored a touchdown last week. Darnell Mooney it should be the number one. So, I mean, they've got, he's got options. I'm not saying they're great, but he's he's got some depth at that tight end he's got that fourth running back so i put him up there a little bit too just as a honorable mention from my end whether or not i actually like it that means the other benches might just suck that bad too yeah i was i was in the same i had walker number two i thought robbie having Najee on the bench right now that's what he's got can't blame him that seems just kind of unfair a little bit (laughs) But I mean, his wide receivers are crap and his wide receiver depth is crap. So I couldn't put him any higher than like five. Um, right. Andy, I did like your bench as far as like you have guys, but like none of them are just like kind of push yeah. that boundary, like like an ETN or somebody like that, where it's like, oh, that guy's really nice to have. It's more like you just have a ton of options. I feel like my bench is fine for bye weeks, but not fine for if I have somebody get hurt. Not yeah, fine if you want to win games. That's fair. I mean, they're on my bench. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't uh, mind playing the guys on my bench for a week, but if I'm forced to start them for the entirety of the season, then I, I'm not real jazzed about that. Yeah, and right. then, uh, at risk, real quick, of being ostracized, I actually think Fryer has a decent bench, too. It's not Oof. helping him because he's losing games and he's not scoring a lot of points in a lot of weeks. Uh, but he's got Kareem Hunt. Uh, before the uh, Hollywood injury, he would have had Judy on the bench and Hollywood starting. Like those are those are two good players to have on the bench, and obviously that's now helping him. You know, with with Hollywood being injured, so I did have him as kind of one of those dark horse uh, bench, but just because he had two you know decent options in that spot. Here's, here's the real problem: his bench and the bottom four starters was I, well with James Conner out, James Robinson not looking great. To be honest with you, outside of Lamar Evans and Adams, everybody's hurt. Everybody's right. hurt, or you could literally just intermix them wherever you want because they're all the same level players at this point. So yeah, right, it'd be worse. And, and I was just kind of looking at it as like, okay, like before the Hollywood injury, you know, before the Connor, if those guys are healthy and they should get healthy at some point later in the season, then he's going to have Hunt and Judy on his bench. And right now, he's using Hunt and Judy in his lineup because his bench is good enough to sustain those injuries. Sure. Will he actually score more than like 55 points? Who knows, but it, it should by all means, it should score more than 55 points. All right. So let's go, let's go to the other end of things. Let's stop talking about these mediocre benches. Like I said, we weren't going to do. And now let's start talking about some of these, these uh, not great benches. So um, Andy, you want to take, kick us off on this one to start? Colin. Colin, big time. <laughs> it's, so bad <laughs> Colin Jesus Christ Philip Lindsay's on the practice squad you've got two quarterbacks and none of them are good you've got an extra defense when you need to go find a third fucking bad quarterback I don't know you're making so many bad choices just in the like positional construction of your of your team and then you're stashing James Cook as a rookie with upside JD McKissick catches passes and we don't play in a PPR And now he's got two other guys running the ball ahead of him. And you got Devin DuVernay as probably the best player on your bench when Devonta Smith's playing. Fuck, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Boyer. So we all kind of agree that Colin's team is just 
let's let's get off of the number one column here. All right. Um, put me to your number two if you've got one. Uh, I, I don't have one. I was so focused on Colin. <laughs> Colin is my worst bench and my second worst bench. <laughs> like, I just, I, I was like, oh, everybody, like, it's, it's really like there's, you know, the, there's the rich teams and there's the poor teams and then there's 50 feet of crap and then there's Colin Kelly's bench and I couldn't get past it. So I don't really have a number two. We talked about some of the mediocre benches. Someone in there is the number I've two. I've got a number two if you want, or Ty can, Ty should probably take it, but I've got so, one if you need. So I've got one that's probably going to be, uh, maybe an un- unpopular opinion, um, but I stayed away from from uh, some of the super low teams, and I went with the team that's actually competing right now. Um, I went with uh, the duo. Um, that's fair. I, I mean, their wide receiver situation, just all the way around. Cortland Sutton's their best wide receiver that him and Alec Pierce and and neither one is very consistent and then you throw Garrett Wilson he's your best bench wide receiver like that doesn't make me feel good um Caleb Huntley you got Dan Bellinger most weeks because Higby is going to be in your starting lineup Bellinger's fine um but I I do believe he just picked guy but what's that I think Bellinger's just to fill in while Higby's on the bye. but even still Right, but then you've got nobody to you. If you drop Bellinger, then you're picking up some scrub off of waivers anyway. Yeah, but then you got Marcus Mariota in for Hertz right now, and that's another pickup for the week just to fill in. So you, you're picking up another scrub. Cordero Patterson's on IR. Like, I don't like this bench at all. I feel like there's there's not a lot happening here. So this is my number two with the duo. I had the duo flagged in the in my bad defenses column when I sorted everybody, but I do think Charlie's is worse. Uh, Charlie's got two quarterbacks on his bench. One of them's still suspended. He's got two other people's handcuffs in Madison and Pacheco, hoping that something hits there for him, which, I mean, Charlie needs a lottery ticket, but it's not going to cash in enough to make his roster – anything so i guess he's i mean pacheco maybe could turn into a keeper if he hits but if matt even if madison hits this year it's just trade bait so there's not much there and then dj moore is probably the best player on his bench because cam Akers may or may not have a job that the artist formerly known as cam Akers. a little while i don't know maybe he gets traded for mccaffrey (laughs) i don't know We'll, we'll, we'll see but uh, yeah, if DJ Moore's the best player on your bench and you've got three quarterbacks on your roster, that's a bad bench. Yeah, well, and I, like I said, I tried to stay away from like Jeremy and Charlie and Colin as a whole because to be Honestly, honest- Honestly, I had Jeremy in my eh column. Yeah, Jeremy, well, right. Jeremy no, made he's... it to the middle with Fryer <laughs> and Robbie. Right, but I my goal was to find one of these benches on a com- quote unquote competitive team right now and tell them that their te- bench sucks. And that was the duo. Yeah, the duo overall has surprised me with their record. I'm not sure that that's going to hold. And not having a great bench going into bye weeks is going to be a big test of them on whether or not they can find guys who can actually fill in. So they're, they've got work to do, I think, uh, for sure, if they want to try and hold on to that record. Yep. So, all right. Well, let's jump over into projections for this week. Um, Mr. Boyer. You want to run us through me versus Colin and give us some lineup decisions. Yeah. So we just talked about Colin's bench. So yeah, look, looking at Colin uh, on his bench, McKissick, Russell Wilson against the Jets, who have a decent defense. I'd probably go with Gino against the Chargers anyway. It feels so weird to say that. I know, right? Like that's. I what, agree I with you. Think. I would. Start yeah, Gino over to. Wilson. Yeah. Um, Wilson's hurt every week. Duh. That's Come true. On. San Francisco is a good defense, but against Kansas City, I think you have to bench him. Uh, I, I don't think Denver's defense is going to do great against the Jets. They're they're a decent enough offense, but like it's not a juicy matchup anymore. But they had to make that move. Um, I don't see any changes that I would make on this team right now, except for dropping probably Philip Lindsay 
and maybe James Cook and picking up potential other players who could do something, but they missed waivers. So, or he missed waivers and his chance to do that this week. So, good luck, Colin. Uh, and what about my side? Uh, Ty, you have a great bunch, but you also have great starters. So, you're str- going to struggle with your kicker um, because you got to drop somebody because you need a kicker. Well, supposedly need a kicker. Um, I think you could probably win this matchup without the kicker, to be fair. Um, but like, I don't the know. Fantasy gods don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you end up just doing what you can to a piece of fantasy gods so you don't get a pick up a bad injury. You've been able to avoid those so far this year. Let's not start. Um, but I, I mean, your lineup is set pretty much from top to bottom. Um, we were kind of talking about it before. I'd probably end up dropping Deontay Foreman to pick up the kicker. Um, but Tyler Bass, and he's on a really good offense, which is a good kicker to have just for consistency. But really the only two like untouchable kickers are probably like Justin Tucker, maybe Carlson. So you could probably drop Bass and someone will pick him up and you'll be sad, but there'll be another kicker out there that you could pick up and get plenty of points out of. So the only um, benefit is now Bass will be passed us by, and then I don't have to worry about this the rest of the year. That's fair. That's fair. But hey, if it makes you would... feel better, Bass is 13th in points for kickers right now, behind names such as Eddie Pinheiro and... <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I mean, he is consistent, which is nice. But okay. I think part of the problem is the Bills score too many touchdowns. Yeah. Right. But you know what? I I would rather have a guaranteed four to five. Yeah, he's got a five-point floor so far. You really right. can't argue with that. Right. I'm not going to get goosed by my kicker, which is honestly a big positive. Right. You might get you, you might get screwed by somebody else's kicker getting 22 points or something sure. stupid, but that's not going to happen every week. So, oh. And, and then he'll be passed my by, so I'm not worried about it. I was saying your team has the chops to beat everybody else's team, even if they get even if the kicker get does get 22. So I will um, say point in favor of pivoting to a new kicker and not worrying about jo- dropping bass is Buffalo weather late in the season is not ideal for kicking in. I don't know if any of you it. have ever been an NFL kicker, uh, <laughs> but I don't think they like the snow and cold and shit. Well, they like the in week. the South. Only in my dreams. And it was Tyler Reed who was the kicker. So, <laughs> uh, All right. Well, so my, my only problem, I assume that Bateman and Higgins are both going to be healthy this week. If not, I'm probably throwing Ayuk in because the only shitty thing about Eno is he plays Thursday night. So, I mean, I guess I'll know in advance so I can make that move. But I, if if James Conner is game time and and I don't feel like I can throw in Eno comfortably if they have not ruled out Conner, then I'm going to play Ayuk for one of these wide receivers and just pray for the best that the other one's playing. Yeah, I was going to say I would – I would play Eno if he's the starter and then Ayuk over Bateman if uh if if those are my options. So right. I'm with you. So all right, who's gonna win this matchup? I got Ty, assuming you pick up a kicker. Uh, that'll happen at some point this week. Ty in my uh preseason rundown, I had uh Colin win this matchup, but I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna go to you on this one. Thank you. I'm glad I was right on that one. <laughs> I, I am also going to take me on this one. So just because we got to do that six straight up and down thing so that I can guarantee a win here. So. <laughs> um, all right, Andy, you want to jump us into Jeremy versus Paul? Yeah, Paul's going to win. Oh, Are we sure? I, I'm, I feel good about that. Aaron Rodgers isn't even healthy. Let's start there. Uh, Jeremy's whole bench is on a bye and or Jamison Williams and or Chase Edmonds. Um, so I'm not starting Chase Edmonds over anybody in his starting lineup right now. I don't, Jeremy, you can drop Chase Edmonds. I know you spent 21 on him in the draft, but he's droppable. Don't, don't sweat it, bud. Uh, Carr over Rogers only if, if, and only if Rogers is not playing, I'm not concerned about this Rogers injury, especially against the commandos shit secondary Start Aaron Rodgers. He will torch the secondary to remind everybody that the Packers are decent. Hashtag Lazard. Uh, and it's going to be a good week for them. So unless Rodgers sits, which I don't think that he will, 
um, you're starting him. So no lineup decisions on Jeremy's side. On Paul's side, Friermuth or Evan Ingram. Um, Friermuth dealing with uh, concussion, so I might pivot to Evan Ingram just for safety's sake because six one half dozen the other. I'm not super excited about Trubisky running that offense again because um, Pickett got hurt, didn't he? Yeah, but uh, I yeah, think... Trubisky looked great in the last two minutes, which is pretty much par for the course for him. He's a fantastic two minute quarterback. He's pretty much terrible the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, all right. So the the tough decision on Paul's lineup here is at running back. I I think if Swift is healthy, you're playing him. He's Paul's best running back. Um, Kenny Pickett was full participant today at practice. Oh, uh, was he? If that makes any difference to you, but I don't think so. It, with Firemouth having the concussion, I'm still worried about that. But that's good news. I thought that I thought we were looking at another week of Trubisky. So, uh, Firemouth has had three concussions in the last couple of years, which isn't also a great. Not thing. good. Yeah, not what you want. Um, so at running back, I think we're leaving Swift in unless he's out, in which case you slot Montgomery in, you sleep easy because you're not really playing Algier over Montgomery at this point. But assuming Swift is healthy, are you putting Monty in over Jeff Wilson or Brian Robinson? Um, my opinion is I'm leaving Jeff Wilson in. I would consider Monty over Brian Robinson. Um, but I really don't like that Patriots matchup. Um, the Green Bay matchups. Green Bay matchups. Green Bay nice matchups. Yeah. But Washington could be playing from behind all game, which doesn't bode well for Robinson either. Yeah. I mean, are the Bears going to be beating the Patriots? Probably not. No, but they'll get Montgomery they involved. Get the ball, yeah. yeah. I'm putting Monty in over St. Robinson. Yeah. I would I would agree. Uh, Paul. Search your studs. Would, Paul was excited when when Robinson put the punch that touchdown in after we started talking trash and then he said he knew it. Yeah, right. Whatever, Paul. Uh real quick, after the game, uh Ron Rivera said, We gotta get Gibson the ball more. And I was like, You're the fucking coach. If you wanted to get him the ball more, he would have got the ball more. So shove it up your ass. Like clearly Robinson is the guy. I love when coaches do that post game. They're like, ah, oh, damn, we should have really gotten that guy the ball more. I don't know what we were doing. Eberflus was pretty much on the same thing with uh, Khalil Herbert. He was like, yeah, maybe we should do something with that guy. And I was like, or you have Montgomery and you're using him because he's your guy. Like, stop talking. Um, when I saw the lineup right now with Robinson in, my eyes kind of bugged out because I was like, why would you start this guy over Monty? But Green Bay's got a bad rush defense that yeah. has not been fixed. So, like, that could be really good for like a quarter and then they're down by two touchdowns so is that going to be enough fantasy production to outweigh monty probably not i would go with monty i can't blame him for shooting for the moon with robinson though because if washington can keep it even a little close i think he'll get a ton of work and i think he does have the potential to out produce monty i just think it's less likely for that to happen because of the way that the matchup will work period Yep, I'm I'm about Montgomery this week too. I don't like the New England matchup, but I still think I'm playing him over with Robinson this week. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting conundrum for him to have, and I think this will probably be something that we argue for the rest of the season per matchups. Nope, because uh, Jeff Wilson will be relegated to second string. Well, I guess then we can talk about Elijah Mitchell, but I'm playing that guy when he's back, assuming he's healthy. So yeah, I agree with that. All right, so we'll who you got in this one? There's a lot of cues on lineups over here on both sides, but I think Jeremy's guys are more trending toward rest days and Paul's guys are more true questionables. Um, if that, if that matters, but I, I still am going to lean Paul. Um, Jeremy catches Paul on the week with cup on a bye, which makes a huge difference, but I still like Paul's team better. I'm going to go Jeremy. Don't fuck it up, Tyler. <laughs> on, on the second one down, I'm already messing it up. Boy, who you I, got? All right, so 
I don't want to lose or, or like yeah, lose any ground to Andy really here, but I'm gonna go with Ty, which doesn't make me feel very good. I'm gonna go with Jeremy. All right, Paul, don't don't let me down here, bud. I I just think that that Rogers and could could connect oh, to, to Romeo Dubs a little bit. I think Kirk and Amon Ra, if they're both healthy and, and good to go, I, they both got good matchups too. So I'm not mad about that situation. As long as Detroit can score again, I would I would rather throw the ball on Dallas than try to run it. So we'll see. It could it could hurt Swift on the other end. There. So see how this game plays out. All right, I'm gonna take us to the duo versus Chris. Um, the duo really you're not playing anybody any Garrett Wilson or Woods oh geez I lost both of them so uh I'll just go ahead and go through this one uh you're not playing Garrett Wilson against Denver this week you're not playing Robert Woods over Sutton Pierce or out Keenan Allen assuming Allen's playing if Allen is out um I guess you put Robert Woods in and hope for the best. I don't think I'm starting Garrett Wilson this week. Um, for Chris, he's got J.K. Dobbins on the bench, George Pickens on the bench, and that's about it. Um, that situation comes back to Deontay Johnson versus George Pickens. Um, Deontay Johnson's volume did go down a little bit last week, but I feel like that was a hole for Pittsburgh. Um, George Pickens and Deontay Johnson both had uh, six to seven targets. They both had three catches last week. Um, so, oh, no, Deontay had five. My bad. So you're still playing Deontay over Pickens. Um, Andy, what, what's your thought on this Dobbin situation? I mean, I think the Kenyon Drake stuff last week was kind of a fluke, but at the same time, Dobbins hasn't really been showing much. He's got 35 attempts and only 123 rushing yards, which is like three and a half yards of carry. It's just not really where you want to be. He's got one touchdown. I don't think the Cleveland matchup is anything special to get me excited about it. So, I, I mean, I would put Dobbins in over Drake but I don't feel good about either. Is that, is that an okay answer? <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I was talking about in, in general, the wide receiver situation, but you're not moving Pickens in for anybody that's in right now. So then Dobbins is your only question mark and you're not starting Drake and Dobbins. So I'm, I'm with you. I'm starting Dobbins. Yeah. And then real quick, if Keenan Allen is out on the other side, uh, Garrett Wilson or uh, Robert Woods. Uh, Bobby Trees, for okay. sure. I'm not playing Wilson against the, the Broncos. Yep. Sertain what... is a lockdown corner at this point, and Wilson's probably going to get that treatment because he's the best receiver on the Jets. Okay, well, that's what I said, too, so we're moving on. Boyer, you don't get an opinion on that one. <laughs> I didn't need to have one. That's fine. Okay, good. Uh, who's going to win this matchup? God, this is an ugly matchup. <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm taking the duo. both on backup quarterbacks and I'm going Chris because he's got no fuck it I'm going duo duo's got both their running backs Jamar Chase can't keep up with that duo because of Henry this this is the Henry win right here where he just powers the team gives you that base that's all he needs here's here's my real problem Jamal Williams and Kenyon Drake if if Kenyon Drake takes any work and Swift is back Chris doesn't have a running back. Right. So I, I can't I can't pick him. So, Bellinger on the other side, though, not great. I mean, whatever. I'm not I'm not overly I mean so everybody Zach, Zach, Zach Ertz. Right? Zach Ertz has had one good game outside of that. He's been seven or lower. So Bellinger can do the same thing. He can put up a touchdown. Hey, Russell Gage for a 24 third just happened in our dynasty league. Okay. Underhill was a part of that, I assume. Yep. And Mattoon. 
naturally. And in <laughs> tune. <laughs> that, that's because those are the only two that trade together. Truth. So, all right. All right so, him Parker, I was offering Devontae Parker for uh, for a fifth just to give him a bye week filler. I'd have done that. I mean, I have both him and Myers and three other wide receivers, but. All right. Hey, we got three more matchups to get through right here. (laughs) Um, So are we all took the duo? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, Boyer, back to you. Jump me to uh, Fryer versus Charlie. Okay. 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 Uh, Fryer. Got Kareem Hunt on the bench. That would probably be one of his first two. I think you probably still have to trust in James Robinson right now. Jerry Judy is hard to trust as anybody on that Denver offense, but Kareem Hunt hasn't looked super great in the last, what, couple weeks now either. Um, Got Damian Harris, but he's questionable, and it appears that Ramondre Stevenson has done enough to keep that like a stronghold on that job and not see too much work. So I'm probably keeping it where it's at. Um, he's got Schultz on the bench in favor of Njoku, but Brandon Prescott should be back if I, if I remember right. So if Schultz is healthy. That's intriguing, but I don't know if I'd trust it until I could see it. Cause we just haven't seen it all from him all year. Um, I'm okay with keeping it as it is, but do you guys have any ideas on, on those players? Nope, Kareem Hunt in for James Conner when James Conner is not starting, and then that's pretty much all you got. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, going over to Charlie. Um, oh, boy. Uh, he still has Jared Goff on his team. That's brilliant. Um, Madison, Akers, Davis on by. I think he's got to stay where he's at. He's got no one else to play. He's got to hope Waller doesn't have any major issues here. Uh, Lamb, I think, is just rest days. Um, but Waller's dealing with the hamstring again. So if Waller's out, luckily he's got a whole bench of people to drop, but <laughs> Waller could be his only major problem this week. Yeah, that, that team, that looks rough. I mean, the, the buys aren't helping with, like, Davis being on a buy and stuff, but it's not like the other buy players. Like, Akers isn't playing regardless. Madison is just a handcuff, so you wouldn't play him unless you knew that Cook was dealing with an injury or something. Like, this bench just doesn't have anybody there. Nope. You're starting who's in. So who's winning? I got Fryer. Yeah, I, I'm I got... going with I'm going with Charlie for the upset. I got I like the Godwin matchup against Carolina. Prescott back against Detroit, who's got a bad defense. I think that might be enough with uh, the rest of this team to pull out some points. Yeah, I'm I'm going with Fryer, but it does it's not not exciting me. And against Charlie, I feel like I should, I should be more excited for this matchup. Right. So. Yeah, you'd hope to if you're playing Charlie, you really want us to say definitely the other guy. But in this one, it's like, eh. <laughs> yep. So right, I'm going. I'm going with Fryer. So we're splitting. Uh, hopefully, I can pick up a game here on Boyer. So uh, Andy, you want to take me to uh, Boyer versus Robbie? Yep. Sure do. This is probably matchup of the week right here. Um, all right, Robbie's got. Uh, he's got Najee on the bench. And the way Walker played last week, I'll totally eat my turd sandwich here. I was wrong. He got the carries. He was exclusively the bell cow last week. I did not expect that. 21 carries, 97 yards and a touchdown. It was a great game. And the way Najee's been playing, you ought to trade him for a receiver, which you should do. But for the time being, Waste that shit on your bench. Sure, why not? Um, <laughs> beyond that, uh, Mooney or Rondale over Jacoby Myers? Probably not. New England's Patriots has been 
oddly good. Yeah, Myers has only played four games, I think, but he's gotten it's been solid those games. Gotten a lot. Yeah, he's got 321 yards, which comes out to 80 a game. That's pretty solid. So yeah, leave it in. Mooney can totally goose egg you, and Rondale Moore for sure can goose egg you. Rondale's got New Orleans, which you guys like their defense. Mooney's got New England, which their defense has been tearing it up. So I, I'm i going to play Myers against Chicago. That's the weakest defense of any of these. Yeah, I think Robbie needs to try and trade uh, Colin for one of them position trades that he keeps wanting to do, you know? I don't think that would help Colin at this point. I don't think nothing's going to help Colin, Colin, but he would, he would totally do it just to be able to do it at this point. He's been asking for it for so many years. This would be the time to take advantage. (laughs) Yeah. On the flip side, no lineup decisions on Boyer's team. You're not getting ETN over any of these guys. You're not putting in cooks or Boyd over any of his receivers. Knox is on a buy. So no choice there. Uh, The only downside on Boyer's team is he's got to start uh, to uh... (laughs) a, Because Josh Allen's on a bye, which is a bummer when you're trying to beat Robbie for the division for the division win. So Yeah, but if, if two is healthy at this point and gonna be able to play the whole game, he's got the weapons. I'm not worried about it. I mean he only had a concussion in both of the last games, two games that he played, and then they didn't let him play a game because they were like, This is gonna look bad if we let him go back out there. And then they were like, Well, it's week seven, you're back to work, bud. We're out of quarterbacks. <laughs> He he sat two games, all right. Come on. Did he sit two? Yeah, Whatever. he sat week five and six. It was nice of him. <laughs> all right. Who you guys got in this one? I'm going Boyer. I trust Boyer's talent to win this game. I am gonna go with Robbie. Barkley versus Jacksonville. Jacksonville's defense isn't great. Walker versus the Chargers. The Chargers defense hasn't been great. And then you got Fournette against Carolina, which just Carolina sucks. So if those running backs can put up points, I Brees Hall against Denver is not going to do what he did the last handful of weeks. I mean, he's still good, but I'm not sure he's putting up the points he had been. Yeah. So we'll see. I, th- I think the running backs on Robbie's side are going to be able to put him just over the edge. As long as everything else doesn't goose them, we'll be all right. Yeah, I think you can run on Denver. Um, their stats so far this year outside of a really big Josh Jacobs game, don't say that, but um, their defense is pretty spread out. I think that there's there's an opportunity for Brees Hall to have a big game. Sure. I'm not saying there's not an opportunity. I'm just saying that man, this is going to be a tougher matchup than – the Pittsburgh Miami Green Bay has had the last three weeks. Fair enough. Yeah, Where who you got? My linchpin here, I think, is going to be um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the tag tag and hill combo. Uh, if that hits, then I should be fine. If he gets pulled halfway through the game, <laughs> or if he doesn't look like the same quarterback, uh, then I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm banking on him coming back to his you know pre-concussion um you know play and if he does i i'm going to win this and i will that's what i'm banking on so i'm going to say i'm going to win because i got to believe in the roster move that i made all I right in you too. all right well i'm going to jump over to walker versus andy then for the last matchup this week walker um kyle pitts versus Taysom hill and that's about it. So which one are you starting, Kyle Pitts or Taysom Hill? You know my answer. If Pitts is healthy, I'm playing him. He even scores touchdowns now. I don't say touchdowns. Touchdown. He got a touchdown. It could happen again. <laughs> and it would be more than one. At that point, it would. You're right. Boy, are you starting Hill or are you starting uh, Pitts? Uh, it's not like Arizona's defense scares me as much. I think I'm going to go with Hill because I still think that he's got a lower floor of that, like four points without that touchdown. 
Pitts has three catches for 19 yards in the last game. So, and I understand you can't say without that touchdown. Like that's not how fantasy football works. But so you can for he Pitts had three catches for 19 score. yards, and then hey, he got the touchdown. So that's and I better think than the first likely, two weeks. If not more likely for Taysom Hill to he only had two get catches, 20 for rushing yards, and a touchdown in the same way. So I'm going to go with Taysom Hill. Hold on, Andy. Let me be honest. If he has two receptions for 19 yards versus three receptions for 19 yards, is that better? His average per catch is not as high. But he caught the ball three times, and he didn't block on a third catch. That's fair. See? Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna probably play Pitts this week as well, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable with either of them, if you want me to be 100% honest with you. So do whatever you got to do there, Walker. Um, let's shoot over to Andy's side. Um, it's kind of the carousel that we're used to here. Court, yeah, carousel, <laughs> wide, carousel wide receivers. Are you yeah, starting? I've been pretty to... consistent. In who I've been starting at least. Yeah. Yeah, but... well, we've had to talk about it every week. <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> it's it's not been the, the right start every week either. I'm in first so. place, so it's working well enough. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're just going to skip this conversation for right now. Andy, you start with tiebreaker. Get off your high horse. <laughs> I didn't ask to be first place. That's just what <laughs> Yahoo told me. Are, Andy, Andy, are you starting the three that are in? Yeah. All right, you're not not banking on Juju yet, right? Not against the Niners, and no, he's had one game. Like Juju's not going to score touchdowns on this team. That's not the way they're going to throw to Kelsey in the red zone, even. I'm, Juju's not built to score touchdowns. I don't expect him to score a touchdown week to week. And in a non PPR league, you need some touchdowns to be able to contribute to fantasy. He busted some tackles and got in the end zone last week. And that's great, but I'm still not terribly impressed unless what he did continues. Um, DK has got a good matchup. Lazard is locked in as probably my wide receiver one right now. Yep. And then Terry against the Packers. I don't feel great about, but I'm not playing Gibson. I'm not playing Carter. So Terry well, it was, is. Terry versus Juju is really my only question because, I mean, you say you have scored touchdowns, but McLaurin's had two, five, and three catches for 15, 76, and 41 yards the last three weeks. So, I mean, that's not been great either. And now he's switching to Taylor Heineke, which I to, may be better. I don't know. Hey, there's a relationship there. So – We'll see. Know. I'm with you. All I right. have no idea, but I'm I'm we're, keeping Terry in. All right, we're moving on. Hopefully, Gerald Everett plays for you this week. You know, throwing a questionable tag out there all of a sudden. He's so, interesting. Hopefully, yeah, I, I imagine that's. What I haven't seen any reports on it, so I assume he no. just was limited to manage his reps or something. Yeah. So, uh, all right, who's oh, who's winning it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, and I know Yahoo projections are dumb. Joe Mixon is projected for 15.2 points. He hasn't broken that yet all season. So I find that kind of humorous. But anyway, go on. Well, he also has not played Atlanta all season. Atlanta's been decent against the run. Points at least I, once before, though. They shut down the Niners, which is ridiculous because I was pissed about that game. But we're not talking about it. We're talking about fantasy football. <laughs> um, so who's winning this matchup then? I like Andy's team here. Uh, his his running backs are good. Um, his wide receivers have been consistent for him, despite the fact that he could have been playing musical chairs. He hasn't had to. Um, it'd be nice to see Metcalf get even more consistent. Um, he's had some down weeks, and he's gonna, I think he's going to need Metcalf to have a good week here. But but I do think that Andy wins it. Well, that's going to be a big turning point in this matchup in general. Metcalf versus Lockett. Um and I'm I'm going to go with Andy with Lazard and Metcalf. I don't know what Hopkins is going to be coming back. I, I still don't like Lockett. I, you have to play him, but I still don't like Lockett. And I think there's enough questions marks with this Elliot Pollard, Tariq Kill, Pitts, and Melvin Gordon situation that Andy doesn't necessarily have quite as many question marks going down. So I'm going to take Andy, but I think it's going to be a close matchup. It's going to be a lot closer than this 88 to 101 conversation that Yahoo wants to have. 
I agree. Just it's a, a lot closer than what. Yeah, just to point out, uh, Lockett's season is a very Lockett type season. He's got two points, ten points, seven points, seven points. Fairly consistent. Twenty-two points. Twenty-two points. One point. So, mm -hmm. but that I also goes to that, Seattle. It also goes to Seattle because Metcalf's been kind of the same way. Right. Yeah. So I think that <laughs> a lot of this matchup comes down to what Hopkins looks like tomorrow night. Uh, in his first game back, he wasn't a world beater last year. Maybe he's coming back fresh and healthy. Maybe he's coming back rusty. He's not a spring chicken anymore. I think he's 29 at this point. So, you know, what does that mean? I, I don't know, but we'll see tomorrow. I think that's if Walker's going to beat me, hop, a big game from Hopkins tomorrow night will go a long way. I completely agree that this is not a 13 point spread type of matchup looking at it, but I am going to go with me to be victorious. If I was picking against the spread, I'd go Walker easy though. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, that's what we should do. We should start picking against the spread. Change. Yeah, but the spread changes so every this. hour. Because we're already so good at this. <laughs> yeah. We get these right every week, you know, <laughs> we did last week. And then Ty went and fucked up the system. <laughs> I, we picked a lot of different ones this week. But you we started it. <laughs> did. So, all right. Um, any, either of you got a short, long joke, somewhere in the middle joke prepared? Or are we getting out of here, Andy? I don't have a joke. All right. I didn't Remember when Boyer joke. used to ask us if a hot dog was a taco? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do remember that question. Um, Fucking bullshit. <laughs> Uh, still hot dogs are not tacos. No, get the um, fuck out of here. We're moving on. <laughs> we're having a good week of fantasy football. Do that like, comment, subscribe thing. Hit that bell. Then you know when we put this out, although we post it right away anyway. Mostly just let us know what you like and don't like so that we can cater our content to the six people who watch this. <laughs> that. So That includes the three of us, so three people that's not true you never watch it you just told us that last week boy doesn't watch your own content yeah dick all right call them out <laughs> all right anyway on that uh we're on peds just like hopkins uh we'll see how he comes out and plays this week we're out <laughs>